Hey everybody, it's Phil Ralston up at our sister church, New Song in uh, Henderson. I just, I love this Easter display that they have of the three crosses. It's lit up at night. I hope you enjoy this view. If you have a chance, drive out uh, towards Anthem and get a look at it at night. It's really cool from the street. Anyways, I hope you have a great service. Hope you have a great Easter and uh, enjoy Pastor Diane's uh, Easter Sunday service. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us in this way today. So turn up the volume and let's get started. When your life seems down and out and you begin to have some real doubts, is there a God away up there somewhere? I've got some news for you and it will chase away all those blues and you can live the life Jesus wants you to. Cause you're gonna be surprised by joy when you least expect it. Jesus will surprise you with his love and joy and will live spreading joy to the world. Peace from God will never end. Jesus is a sure reality, you'll see. You will find happiness and it will come even when you're in a mess and help you through the trials that you face. Cause you're gonna be surprised by joy. When you least expect it, Jesus will surprise you with his love and joy and will live, spreading joy to the world. a funny thing it makes you want to laugh and want to sing or sometimes just to sit alone and pray giving glory to our Lord serving Christ with one accord and living with the joy God wants to give Cause you're gonna be surprised by joy When you least expect it Jesus will surprise you with his love and joy And will live Spreading joy to the world Cause you're gonna be surprised by joy When you least expect it Jesus will surprise you with his love and joy and will live, spreading joy to the world. Shout for joy, praises bring, voices raise, start to sing, start to sing. Every life is a story written day by day Drama building, twisting, turning all along the way All along the way Shout for joy, praises bring, voices 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So very glad that on this special day of celebration that Pastor Dave is here with us because it's a special occasion and happy that he's here. You may wonder why you haven't seen me for uh, quite some time. And uh, if you do remember, as I was announcing my retirement, I would talk about caring for our son, Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, he's gonna be 34 soon, um, Down syndrome, kidney failure, bladder yeah. disease, all mm -hmm. sorts of issues. And I, I said that uh, his care, his needs will increase and my abilities will decrease, you know, with advancing age. And in, in fact, since retiring uh, twice, his medical needs have increased yeah. uh, two times to be uh, pretty all consuming all day mm -hmm. and all night. So uh, you just don't see me very much anymore because I'm one of those people that is a primary caregiver mm -hmm. for a uh, loved one with significant needs and there are many people mm -hmm. uh, but you just don't see people like us very often because we're so uh, involved in the caregiving yeah. so that's why you don't see me uh, in these uh, online worship services it, it, it just is a lot of work on my part but uh, knowing that this is Easter I thought well I'll just give a little more effort today. And so on this Easter, our first reading is from the New Testament book, The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now that is about as concise <laughs> a message of the gospel of Jesus mm -hmm, Christ mm -hmm. as, as you can get. 
That's, that's what it feels like that almost every single one of our Bible readings is today is about that. It's, it's each one in their own way is that core gospel proclamation. And of course, uh, a key element of that whole message is about the death and then particularly the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I think what's kind of uh, a special perspective in Acts, where we're hearing Peter, but this is in the book of Acts, is how in the book of Acts is talking about how the church is growing and spreading. The Holy Spirit is very much guiding and inspiring, giving the courage for the apostles to speak out and then also for many to hear that message and to respond and become believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And what was, I think, a very pivotal moment in that whole spreading of the good news about Jesus Christ and the me message of the resurrection, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection to new life through Jesus Christ was the awareness that was catching on that this was for all people. That's what Peter was now really becoming aware of with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that this was Jesus was there to be the savior, uh, not only for God's own people, the Jews, though he definitely understands that where he, he focuses on the messages first in Judea and Jerusalem, which would have been within the area of the Israelites, but that now God is showing them the way to reach out further and further with that good news about Jesus Christ, that Jesus did take on our sins, he did die, but he did not stay in the tomb, that on, as it says, that he was raised from the dead on the third day, and that so many people were able to see him and experience him, and now that message goes out, that message goes forth, so that we too become part of that, that chain, that continuing, ongoing sharing of that message about through Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins is there for every single person on this earth in Jesus' name. Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So all of the Psalms are sometimes considered or identified as the prayer book of the Bible. Apparently, I heard this from someone, I'll just trust them, that Martin Luther even felt that if he could only have one book of the entire Bible, he wanted the Psalms. That's pretty amazing. Another perspective though that I sometimes think about the Psalms is to think of them as Jesus' own prayers or something that Jesus himself would have expressed in his own faith life. And to think about that in that perspective of now Jesus is risen from the dead and this could be that statement, this could be Jesus' own words perhaps on that Easter day, that first Easter, you know, giving thanks to God for God's mercy endures forever, uh, that rejoicing and that shouting, knowing that God is the one who brings salvation. And then of course, that, that final phrase, which is very true that we remember in celebrating Easter where Jesus now could declare, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Well, because of Jesus, being raised from the dead, we too now also can make that same statement, that same proclamation. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And now we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, 
in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. We've been, again, uh, each in its own way, the Bible readings gives us that message about Jesus' death and, again, that especially the resurrection that we celebrate this day. We heard a little bit of Peter's way of sharing it. And now we're hearing from the Apostle Paul, this particular chapter in Corinthians, the entire chapter is focused all about the resurrection. So we're just, we're just getting a portion of that. And the port, part of it though is extremely important because Paul wants to emphasize how much we rely on this message, how foundational, how important it is to be the basis of our faith that we we rely on and we can depend on this message. I like that it says you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, that it is something that we really know and it is absolutely true. He gives what he has learned from some others. Now we'll hear in a moment that Paul did have his own experience of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. But he didn't live with Jesus in his earthly ministry. He didn't go through those years. So he knows about that from the other disciples, the other apostles. Uh, he knows what they did share. And so he, in turn, does pass that on as well. He affirms that, that incredible but extremely important message that Jesus died for our sins and then that he was buried and then he was raised on the third day almost sounds like we're saying, uh, you know, in a way, this, this little section reminds me of a creed. It's, it's sort of like an even uh, more compact version of like the Apostles' Creed that was shared early, early, early in the Christian church. And that's what, that's what Paul shares and affirms. And so we too have been the ones who've been blessed to receive that same that same message of faith and belief that's been passed on from one generation to another to another. This is the, the community's faith, the community's experience. But then now Paul turns into his own personal experience of meeting the resurrected Jesus Christ. He, he says, last of all, for one I'm timely born, because you know he did persecute Christians initially, and it wasn't until he was out of the city of Jerusalem heading to do that, that he has stopped on the road to Damascus, and that encounter with Jesus Christ there, the resurrected Lord, has a very transformational effect on his life. He is completely changed, and instead of being one who tries to put Christians in jail, uh, Paul becomes one who tries to have more people become Christian. He does everything in his power to tell others about the good news about Jesus Christ. And so he says, whether it's someone or myself or whoever, as long as we share that good news about Jesus Christ, that's what matters so that more and more can come to believe. We read 
from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said, Nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And that's how it ends. And that's the ending in God. You may look in your Bible and see that there are some more verses mm -hmm. after verse 8. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually there's a footnote saying that these were added later. Right. Because I guess people were so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, dissatisfied with it ending mm -hmm. uh, that they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid and we yeah. don't like you know unfish when you're watching a series on TV yeah maybe your favorite TV show and the season comes to an end how does it end a cliffhanger yes and you're waiting for the next season to start because you want to see mm -hmm. how it turns What's out gonna happen next? well this yeah. is like the ultimate cliffhanger yeah. because Jesus well, he's not there. Mm -hmm. The tomb is empty. Mm -hmm. These women are given a, a task, a message. Yeah. But it says they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Mm -hmm. The end. How could that be? Now, now, I look at this and, mm -hmm. and have always taught this, mm -hmm. that in order to understand why this message ends this way, because the Gospels, uh, the other Gospels, do not end with the uncertainty. They give us they more. They give more mm -hmm. examples mm -hmm. of Jesus appearing to um, apostles yep. and others and, yep. and how the story continues on. Mm -hmm. But the Gospel of Mark actually begins, you go know, back to the very beginning of mm -hmm. the Gospel of Mark, and it says the beginning mm -hmm. of the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning, yeah. chapter 1 through chapter 16. Mm -hmm. It's not all of it, it's just the beginning. But we know more happened because mm -hmm. we are here. So the message as I see it is that you are the next step. Mm -hmm. You are living out the Easter proclamation. Yeah. All that has happened since then doesn't need to be written down because we are continuing to live the rest of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And and I do I do always have to smile. It just it is kind of here we get to this big moment of the whole journey of Jesus life and his teaching and his healing and all the ministry and then of course the the Lord's Supper and the Garden of Gethsemane and, and the betrayal, the trial his crucifixion and then we're finally at that you know that culmination that that pivotal important moment where you know here is the the resurrection of Jesus Christ and we're told that they didn't say anything there I like the other part though about the words here in Mark's gospel was that they did get a message which was they were supposed to go tell the disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. He's going ahead of you. And I think that too may be another 
hint as far as that what you were just saying, living out the gospel message, the continuation of this gospel story is Jesus goes ahead of us. You know, the resurrected Lord is there leading us and guiding us, living into a new normal, living into a, a new life, living into a forgiven life, living into a hope-filled life. And that's the good news that we celebrate, that Jesus is alive and he leads us into that new gospel-centered, forgiven, hope-filled, loving life. On this day of rejoicing, we pray for the life of the church, the world, and all people in any need. You give life to your church by joining the baptized to the body of Christ. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. You give life to those in need by the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Comfort those who suffer. Encourage those who care for the sick. Bind up the brokenhearted and wipe away the tears of all who mourn. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. You give life to this community of faith by infusing us with love for one another. Inspire us to reach out to our neighbors in meaningful ways and bring the joys of community to wider family of people. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the spring of new and everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
join with us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Stay in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We'll join again in worship next week. Oh